In release 5, the aim is to get rid of the circuit switched core network and by that create an all IP based network. But that doesn't mean that the real time services shall disappear. The real time services shall from now on be transmitted over the packet switched core. One problem with real time services in a packet switched network is the difference in communication. In a datacom environment, it is built on client to server communication, meaning that if I send you an email, it is not sent into your computer, it is delivered to the mail server, and then you as a client have to download it to your computer. To handle voice calls, it must be possible to alert the called party about an incoming call. The computer must generate a ring signal. This problem is something that IETF, Internet Engineering Task Force, already has addressed. There are several solutions, but the one adopted by 3GPP is SIP, Session Initiation Protocol. This protocol SIP, as well as the IP protocol, is in its nature wild and crazy, meaning that it is hard to control. But why does an operator want to control what happens in its network? Because then the operator can send a bill. The platform that adds features to the SIP protocol so it becomes controllable is IMS, IP Multimedia Subsystem. So now the operator is pleased, but what is it that pleases us as customers? When the real-time services are put on a packet-switched router, there is another problem that arises. Quality of service, which is very important for the user experience. The most important QS parameter for real-time services is delay. Real-time services are very delay sensitive. Routers that are congested start to buffer packets and now there are IP packets containing datacom services and real-time services. So to be able to achieve an all IP based solution with maintained QoS for real-time services, the routers must be instructed which IP packets that can be buffered and which cannot. That is the second task for the IMS platform. If the operator can control what happens in his network, he can also guarantee a certain level of QoS. The third task for IMS is to be a transparent gate for mobile application developers. This has more than one advantage. The service provider only needs to concentrate on the development of the application and does not need to know anything about network performance or topology. The application developer can be a third party, leading to that the operator can have a business agreement with any type of and a lot of service providers. The focus of 3G network evolution has so far been on the core network. In release 5, however, HSDPA, High Speed Downlink Packet Access, is added in the access network. The access method used in UMTS is WCDMA, Wideband Code Division Multiple Access, where the different users of the radio spectrum are separated with codes. A very important aspect of this type of solution is power control. A user of the radio should never use more output power than required, because otherwise it steals capacity from the other users. Reduction of power is always good because it reduces intracell interference, intracell interference, and may of course in the case of the shared power supply in the downlink also be directly related to capacity. However, fast power control is also necessary in the uplink since the UEs are moving around. 
Uplink channels are certainly not orthogonal and hence this is needed in order to maximize capacity. In the downlink from the base station to the UVs there can sometimes be unused power room which is a waste of capacity. This unused power room is what HSDPA is using. To make the throughput even higher, new higher order modulation schemes has also been added.